Okay, our first speaker today is Ujio Katri. Uh, he's a, a second year student at Dr. Jerry Wu's laboratory. Okay, Ujio, go yes. ahead. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Zhao, for the introduction. So today I will be talking on the development of novel nicotinamide derivatives as the next generation rate protein tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So, so to give a brief background on RET, so it's a rearranged during transfection. Uh, RET is a protein tyrosine kinase. So uh, RET belongs to the GDNF family of ligands. So once the ligand binds to the receptor, this leads to the dimerization of the RET. So this dimerization in turn uh, results in the autophosphorylation of the downstream tyrosine kinase residues. So RET is uh, normally present uh, in chromosome 10 and it has a normal role in neural, genitourinary and thyroid development. So upon uh, the phosphorylation of the tyrosine kinase, uh, tyrosine residues in the intracellular domain, uh, there are two main pathways uh, that uh, it uh, dictates. So one is the MAP kinase uh, signaling pathway through ERK, which uh, results in cell proliferation and differentiation. So the other one is the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. So this helps in the cell survival. So uh, rate uh, alterations has been found in different cancers. So one of the major uh, alteration is the rate mutation. So in sporadic medullary thyroid carcinoma, MTC, it's uh, like more than 60% of the cases have been found to have the rate mutation, whereas more than 90% of the patients have like hereditary mutation in rate. So here to illustrate one example, one of the most common mutation is the rate M918T mutation in the kinase domain. So what it does is that it uh, makes the rate uh, ligand independent and now the rate can be activated without by ligand binding and it uh, will continuously express the downstream signaling pathway proteins resulting in uh, cell survival, proliferation and growth. So another uh, most common pathway uh, is the red fusion with the different fusion partners. So almost 2% of the cases has been seen in non-small cell lung cancer harboring one of the red fusion where KIF5B red fusion is one of the most common fusion. And also uh, about 10 to 20% of the fusions has been found in papillary and other thyroid carcinomas where we find CCD6 rate or NCOA4 rate fusions. So uh, the rate fusions are also seen in multiple other cancer types, but it is uh, very rare. Uh, here we can see it's less than 1% in all those different kinds of cancer. So uh, the theory is the same that now the rate is ligand independent and it can activate the downstream signaling pathways through the dimerized rate fusion partners which results in like cancer in both uh, lung cancer and thyroid carcinoma. So uh, to give brief overview of those fusion partners, KIF5B and CCDC6, uh, those two fusion partners are also uh, located in chromosome 10. So where rate is located. So mostly it has been reported that uh, uh, mutations occur frequently in the place where rate is located. And so when the uh, cells like DNA repair pathway occurs, then there are like two pathways, either like paracentric chromosome inversion or pericentric chromosome inversion. That leads to joining of these uh, like KIF5B or CCD6 fragments with the rate. Now what it does is that, as I showed you before, now it is ligand independent and it can dictate the regulation of downstream signaling pathways continuously. So now I would like to move on towards tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So also a brief background on tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Here we can see the tyrosine kinase with its ATP binding pocket and the solvent front is right here whereas the back pocket of the kinase is right here. So there are uh, different type of tyrosine kinase inhibitors that are built in order to target those tyrosine kinases. So there is a, uh, an oversized type 1 tyrosine kinase inhibitors. What it does is it binds to the top of or the roof of the roof of the ATP binding pocket and uh, it does not allow ATP to bind to its ATP binding pocket. That means tyrosine kinase is no longer active. 
So when we treat uh, for a prolonged period of time with these type of tyrosine kinase inhibitors, it has been found that uh, the tyrosine kinase develops mutation in the solvent front mutation site or the solvent front site right here. So now this tyrosine kinase inhibitor cannot bind to its original binding site and ATP can go and bind to its original ATP binding site. Now the tyrosine kinase is active. We are not killing the cancer cells. So also, another type of uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor is the oversized uh, bulk uh, type 2 tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Now what it does is that it binds to the uh, roof of the ATP pocket as well as it is able to reach to the back pocket of that ATP binding pocket. So it also works similarly that it is competing with ATP and uh, does not allow ATP to bind to it. But then there is another problem of uh, acquiring the mutation. Now the mutation is acquired at the gatekeeper's site inside of that ATP binding pocket. So this drug cannot bind to uh, its original binding site again as normally it would. Now ATP can bind to it, then the cancer cells can survive because the tyrosine kinase is active. So uh, there has been like multiple researches and uh, there are many uh, drugs available in the market now so we're using like small uh, molecular like inhibitors like a type 1 small and compact what it does is that it is small that it can avoid both of those uh, gatekeeper site as well as the solvent front site and still like uh, compete with ATP and does not allows like allow the ATP to bind to its original site so now moving more like focus towards the red uh, targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitors there have been like ca cabozantinib and vandetinib used in the past and is still being used uh, for red uh, altered cancer treatment but both of these drugs uh, are not red specific and they are multi kinase uh, inhibitors so what it does is that uh, not only uh, it targets red but uh, other kinases uh, and uh, such as like VSFR2, FGFR, MET, Alcaros, and many other kinases. So multiple uh, toxicities has been found in patients and they do not tolerate uh, these drugs well. So uh, recently, FDA approved these two drugs, pralcetinib, also known as blue 667, and sarpercatinib, Loxo 292, which are red specific uh, for the treatment of uh, these red altered cancers. So, these blue 667 and loxo 292 uh, uh, are the recently FDA approved drugs. So, both of these drugs work by like targeting the M918T uh, full length mutation as well as the gatekeeper VA24 mutations. But uh, it has been already reported that it, even these uh, highly potent and red specific drugs start to develop resistance against the GA10 solvent front mutations. So here is uh, one paper where they reported uh, uh, the emergence of those uh, GA10 solvent from mutations such as GA10R, S, or GA10C, and V. So what it does is that the bulkier uh, groups uh, present in those uh, solvent front sites now uh, has the static hindrance uh, towards the LOXO-292 binding to its original binding pocket as I already mentioned you on that background on tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So now LOXO-292 is not able to bind uh, and go inside the ATP binding pocket to have uh, its uh, inhibitory effect. So on the bottom left uh, figure we can see that the LOXO-292 and blue 667 both have very like lower than 5 nanomolar IC50 towards inhibition of rate phosphorylation compared to 23 nanomolar and 240 nanomolar of IC50 in those previously used drugs. But when they have these uh, solvent from mutations such as in this case the GA10S mutation, we can see that LOXO 292 and BLUE667, the IC50 is increased. Of, of, very significantly compared to those just the wild type without any uh, solvent from mutations. Whereas here we can see that for Vandetinib, it didn't even reach its like 50% inhibitory effect. Uh, so on this figure, uh, I want to show you the crystal structure of uh, LOXO 292 binding to the rate. Uh, by protein tyrosine kinase. Here we can see the G18 residue right here. This is the wild type and the V84 residue is right here. So uh, 
as I already told you, LOXU292 is able to bind to this uh, uh, mutation at this site. But when there is a bulkier group present at this site, now the drug cannot even enter uh, to inhibit the red phosphorylation.